Waka 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 what's up and welcome back to the channel for yet another FC Finch Eagle Moss review. That's right. We've done a bunch of a weekend of Transformers and some Hot Wheels. So now we're going to come back with an Eagle Moss review. And yes, our first alien ship because today we are going to be taking a look at the Klingon D4 concept designed by John Eves um, as was supposed to be seen in Enterprise. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, Real quick, I do want to provide a quick disclaimer. Um, if you're in a yelling in the background, there's a sled hill near my house, and uh, it's we just got our first snow in a while, so uh, the entire uh, neighborhood of kids is out from school. They're all playing uh, it'd be high, close behind the house, so I do apologize, but that is the nature of the beast. I'm not going to tell them to stop playing because I would totally be outside sledding if I were able to, and my joints would not take a beating. But that being said, we are still going to go on with the review Um and give her try and make uh, try and use my loud voice to blanket out any sort of uh, background noise, and of course a nice Klingon kapla. So let us first off, let's get to. Uh, we're not going to do the box because we already know, and this is actually the box for this ship. Um, uh, th th all the boxes, they're the same. In fact, there's a good chance for me to show you. <laughs> This is the box of the ship. The bubble is the only thing that's different. The box is entirely the same. So not even going to do the box for these things anymore. Uh, not not the small ones. Only if it's an XL or a special edition that came in an XL size box. Because then the box actually is different per ship. But since it's not, uh, for, a lot of the, for a lot of these uh, older uh, issues, um, we're not even going to bother to go over for it. So, a quick overview of this ship. So, uh, this is the Klingon D4 concept. We've never seen a D4 concept. So, uh, if you remember uh, the episode, uh, I believe it was season uh, episode 5, season 1 of Enterprise, uh, Unexpected, uh, where they were helping out a ship that was traveling in the wake of a Klingon warship. Um, the Klingon warship model that we saw was a D7, a very rough model of a D7. This was the ship that was actually supposed to be seen. Uh, they had Johnny's design a complete new concept of a predecessor to the D7, and uh, he did it, and they said, now nah, we're just going to take this. And so, uh, yeah, that's what happened. That's kind of how we got here. But this is the model he designed, and we're going to go over it. We're going to dig real deep because I do think it's a cool model, and uh, I personally have always loved the uh, lineage of Cleon designs um, uh, as far as, uh, as far as pre-discovery. Goes. Not to say I don't like Discovery, but I, I'm more of a fan of the uh, traditional um, designs from the classic series. Um, so we're going to go over this and check it out. So as usual, uh, we're going to move uh, the D4 back and take a quick look at the magazine. So there we go. Got a nice uh, front render of the Klingon D4. And uh, straight ahead, I'm going to turn off the uh, light so we can uh, just kind of get a look uh uh, that's oh, that's almost even worse. <laughs> uh, so um, again, I, I, I love the kind of render on this. I'll talk a bit more about the ship when we get to the ship. I'll save it for that. But um, Battle Cruiser concept in two thousand one designer John E's Klingon D four special issue. Um, this was it. Yeah, this was a special issue. I pre ordered this uh, again. We you already know the story. Eagle Moss is bankrupt. I pre ordered this a long time ago. So uh, I'm just going back and reviewing all my collectibles. Uh, still more screen glare. Battle Cruiser. Yeah. No, I mean, again, not, not much. It is one of those concepts they never use. Here's a nice, awesome, I love this shot. Look at this. Just a beautiful animation. Klingon D4, John Eves designed a new version of the classic Klingon Battlecruiser first seen in Star Trek, the original series. So, and, and fun fact, um, I believe it was uh, the model company, um, Ertl, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Trekkers, that requested uh, design the design of the original D7, um, and their argument was, well, who's the Enterprise going to fight? We, we Kids want to play with toys, so even though Star Trek, not about fighting, but, uh, you know, from a marketing perspective, it was, well, we need a, we need a model so, so people can play with the Enterprise and have it battle other ships, so that was the uh, ship they came up with, at least that's the story I heard. Got some nice uh, concept arts uh, done by Johnny, it looks really good. Again, more concept art. You can see the weaponry, uh, kind of like an almost saucer type. Just kind of 
proving out what may or may not have been the predecessor to the D7. I mean, just kind of going back and a lot of the designers, like Andrew Probert with his Enterprise C concept, you know, just kind of proving out, going through different designs and uh, seeing, you know, what would have been, what would make sense as a logical predecessor. And we can see some more art um, of the ship coming around. And there we go. Then we got the Klingon tanker. I believe this actually was a design used uh, later on in Enterprise. Uh, the Klingon Raptor, also a design we see in Enterprise. And again, got a few other designs here. Just to, again, I, I, you know I don't read the magazines if you followed uh, my videos so far, but it's always cool to just kind of look back and see some of these uh, designs. Got the Klingon uh, scout ship. Uh, I, no, that's, that's the ship the Augment stole. You know, just really cool stuff. And then, of course, a nice picture on the back of the uh, Klingon D4 concept. Looks really good. Nice upper orthographic view. And real quick, we're going to go over the stand because it's so quick and easy. It's no different than every other stand. Got your uh, base, and we got the number uh, 1465. I have no idea what ship that goes to. Klingon D4 concept, la, la, la. And uh, then we got our stand right here, and you're just going to put the peg into the hole, and there we go. And it can, yeah, it's wobbly, but that's okay. The ship kind of holds its own. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the ship. The stand just goes right behind the impulse engines just like that and uh that holds pretty good i mean that's that's not gonna fall out anytime soon it's a pretty solid hold and that is pretty good all right so let's talk about the d4 itself and uh yeah again um i'm i'm a huge fan of uh th this design lineage and i'll show a few of the other klingon ships close to this uh shortly but I i've always just kind of loved how it's it j they just kind of go from this basic evolution of proving out this design that, that became the iconic klingon design we all know uh, so again, uh, right on top, it, it's almost like you can see some copper, uh, DK, it's, it's like a slate, uh, a slate color, and you can see some of these copper detailing, it's almost like a, uh, anti-Federation Aztec, almost like, you know, the Federation has their eggshell blues, their light grays, you know, very, very happy, this is kind of a, a very gloomy style model, as so you could, it's, it's got like this feel of, you know, just this absolute attack feel that you know that we're no, known for the Klingons they're very battle oriented raced got a lot of nice embossed detail on here and then of course going on to the boom you got some nice on an air on surface area this small look at all this molded detail going on to the boom right here very good looking there and then of course the Klingon empire symbol right on the back done in there done very nice very colorful very very distinct very very nice detailing uh one of the things i really love about this model is you can tell that it's got the distinct shape of a d7 but it's got like it, as jeremy clarkson would say scaffolding in the back you know a lot of this it, it has this pre-production feel like like the, you know they were going for the d7 but it's like they, they dial it a step back so it's got pieces missing to it it looks you know it looks like a design that would predate the D7. Going back to the impulse engines, you got a nice shade of a no chains clearance plastic on this model. That's okay. Again, it's a Klingon ship. It's meant to look dull. You got some nice rib detail right back here on the impulse engine drive. It looks very, very good. Moving on to the cells, again, painted red detail um, on the warp coil area, or I, I believe that would that be a Bassard collector? And then, of course, this nice open. I know a lot of people don't like open areas. I'm okay with it depending on the model again <coughs> this is the build-up to what later became the d7 um looking very good uh th this feels in fact i believe this feels mostly die cast uh on the back here so very no nacelle misalignment issues it looks like yeah no no nacelle no nacelle misalignment it looks very good very good all around. And again, just love the militaristic coloring here. And then you got some, uh, the, you, uh, these, uh, th these wiring details. Again, looks like more scaffolding here. It looks like, you know, trying to prove out the structural integrity field of the boom. And it needed these extra restraints to keep the ship in one piece. Looks, looks very cool. I'm not sure if this makes so much sense in space, but it is what it is. Um, and again, these are, these are just light pieces of plastic here. They'll, they'll move very slightly. 
And then, of course, you have the uh, very famous. Uh, this is this is basically the uh, front the. Uh, uh, control center you'd see on the D7. So again, you could see it going towards that design, going towards that design. Um, and again, you got some nice detail right here. Look at these, look at this kind of like coloring. It's almost like this, uh, this tapestry kind of hidden in there. It's really, again, I love just the hidden tones, uh, in this ship. Just looks very cool, very, very kind of industrial feel. It's, it, I, I really like the color choices that they made for this ship. And for a quick comparison, here is the D4 concept next to the ship we do see in Enterprise, the D5. And uh, the D5 will get its own review, but uh, you can see some similarities, like again, the inclusion of these uh, additional supports, the openings in the nacelles, kind of like a, a scaffolding feel on the back. But you can see a lot of differences, like the Klingons deviated from this design. They wanted to try something radically different, and you know, it, it didn't end up working out. Just like you'd see with a lot of with in the automotive industry you know sometimes automakers they will deviate radically from a design it'll work or it won't work they'll go back to what they had so just really cool i mean for for ships that are supposed to be successors to a, ship, a successor one another it's just so cool to see the i'm just trying to get my fingers off the boom so you can see the differences in the in the bridge uh, compartment but just really cool to see the differences uh even in ships that are you know supposed to be very close relatives again look at that you can see the more sleek feel you can see the ship evolving to a more sleek state uh that we see on the d7 really really cool so there you go and uh we're gonna move that off to the side and one final comparison i don't have a d7 but i do have the uh katinga the uh, big brother to the uh, and this again. This will get its own. In fact, I'm probably going to do the XL Katinga um, uh, and just have this as a comparison. But so you can kind of see uh, the differences. You know, have it, the uh, Katinga having the more complete hull, um, less thrusters on the impulse engines. In fact, for anybody that remembers Axnar, I know some people kind of feel they kind of feel sour about that. But um, you remember the D6 kind of had these similar impulse engines um, on the D4. So you can kind of see the engines, less engines, you know, probably more thrust power, um, the completeness of the nacelles, um, but still similarities, especially in the boom. In fact, just a smaller boom, uh, no supports on the boom. Uh, you know, again, just just that kind of uh, those technological leaps, you know, things become smaller, we use less, uh, we're able to do more with less over time. So uh, again, uh, there you go. So let's summarize. And yeah, no box behind the ship because all the boxes had the Federation symbol on it. And this is a Klingon ship, so we'll just say, Kapla! In a nice Klingon chant. And as for the ship, uh, yeah, uh, definitely love this ship. Um, I think it follows the lineage from the original series through the Berman era uh, really well. Uh, I absolutely love the industrial down-to-business feel of this ship. The, I think it's absolutely beautiful um, with the specific deco that it has. Again, lots of nice subtle, subtle details in this ship. Uh, I do highly recommend the ship as usual if you can get it at a good at a uh, close to the original retail price. Um, I picked this up when it was new. I think it was around thirty to forty. I don't remember the exact price. That being said, I do have a link for you if you are looking for Eagle Moss ships. Now, I did not see this ship on there, but it's a website called realmerch.com. I have no firsthand experience with this site. I need to stress that, but I have seen people posting about it on the Hero Collector Eagle Moss Facebook page. Um, apparently, people, some people have had luck with it, um, and the prices I see on there are very reasonable prices. I think it's around 50, for, 50 bucks for some specials. Some of them are under what you would have paid. Some of them are just a little bit over, nothing crazily so. So give that a check out. I will put a link in the description down below, realmerch.com. If you want to see more videos like this, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I try to do one to two Eagle Moss ships every week. Uh, I do have a full-time job in, in addition to this. So whenever I can get it done, I get it done. Um, 
I'll put a link in the description to my Eagle Moss playlist down below as well, so you can check that out and see any reviews that you may have missed. I have a few of them up by now. That being said, it is time to end. I have been FC Finch. Thank you so much for watching. Live long and prosper.